Next discussion, let's be sustainable. The time is now. So I'm inviting first to the stage, uh, the moderator, Data Helmane in CSR, joined by Gatis Zamors, Ministry of Environmental Protection and Regional Development of the Republic of Latvia, Kristina oh. Nagler, Impact House, and joining us online, Martin Zemitz, European Commission representation in Latvia. Welcome. Hello, nice to see uh, those of you who are here in the premises of uh, University of Latvia, uh, my uh, colleagues for today or for discussion. Uh, hello, Martin, uh, for, uh, for joining us hello. Uh, remotely. <laughs> nice to, always nice to, to see you. Uh, yes, uh, in CSR, I, I just wanted to explain that, uh, that uh, it's the Institute for Corporate Sustainability and Responsibility, and most probably this is the reason why I'm invited to be, uh, to be uh, here and uh, moderate this discussion. And uh, I have to be um, honest, uh, just uh, very recently I uh, found out uh, that I'm uh, environmentally depressed. And I'm env environmentally depressed since uh, age of uh, seven. I just didn't know that uh, there is a special uh, term uh, for this. So uh, I know uh, right now. Uh, and um, I um, have always been uh, quite concerned about sustainability and uh, w working with the different companies, with corporate sector, I still uh, hear from the companies that uh, we have uh, time uh, to become sustainable and, uh, and um, mm, we should wait for co our consumers to, to, to raise uh, kind of concerns about this or, or uh, who will pay for sustainability because it's too expensive. So my first question to, to my, uh, my uh, uh, colleagues for this discussion is, uh, do we have uh, time for becoming sustainable or, uh, uh, or uh, we, we are already uh, late uh, with this? Uh, should we hurry? Got this? Maybe you can start. Maybe I can. <laughs> um, okay, to be quite honest, no, we don't have time. And uh, this, uh, this problem was due rest yesterday. But I'm not a big fan of... Uh, of pushing this idea of us being late, us needing to do something yesterday and, uh, and having this stress and kind of fear of, uh, fear of um, all the problems that uh, come together with the, with the environmental problems. I, um, um, because it doesn't work. It really doesn't work. We, this idea of us uh, making too much damage on this, on this planet is is around for years, and as we see, it hasn't uh, had uh, a really great results so far. So if you are posing the question, do we have time, then the answer is no. But, uh, but, uh, but I, would, I would invite us not to concentrate on this of something, a problem of us being late, but of opportunity of uh, all of us to do something about it. Uh, I agree. Uh, it's it's very important to look at uh, opportunity rather than focus on on problems. Uh, Martin, uh, uh, you have been in, uh, in 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 touch recently with many uh, local uh, companies, and you know their concerns and their uh, their plans about uh, becoming uh, greener and more responsible. Uh, what uh, feeling uh, do you have regarding? Well, you said you were a climate uh, climate depressed or, or climate pes pessimist. Yeah. I, I'm always a climate optimist. I think there's a, a world of opportunity uh, out there, including for the companies from Latvia, from startups to, to small companies to, to bigger companies. Uh, I think this is a uh, as much a demand as a supply-driven uh, process. Of course, uh, in some ways, sustainability can be a good business, especially if you're in climate tech, in green tech, there are so many uh, new solutions, new approaches, um, new technologies to, de to, to, to be developed. So I think this is a, an excellent area for, for, for the business to concentrate. Uh, for the businesses which were not born green, which are already there and which need to adapt or, or become more green, uh, of course, uh, the capital uh, expenditures upfront uh, can be uh, a bit daunting. 
Uh, but um, just imagine, you know, if you don't, uh, if you don't think sustainability, don't make these uh, investments now, you know, sooner or later, uh, you will be facing an existential crisis. And so it's, uh, I agree with Gattis that, 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 that the time is now, uh, and in fact, it was yesterday, but, uh, but, but I see a positive trend. I think more and more businesses are realizing that this sustainability thing, you know, is not something that uh, will go away, that somehow we can hide from it, that somehow it will not touch us, uh, that, that we'll be able to, you know, go along business as usual, you know, uh, uh, making our product or, or selling our, our goods or, or services uh, as, as, if, as if there was, you know, nothing was happening. I mean, from, from every perspective, we see that uh, sustainability is, is, is coming on to us, you know, from, from observable climate change, which is due to human endeavor, uh, to excellent business uh, models that we see companies which have uh, done a IPOs and, and very successfully. And, and from, you know, just from the purely from the amount of, of finance that is going uh, into the green transition and, and doing green products. So while there are challenges, of course, I'm, I'm very positive. I mean, I, I see the companies are realizing the challenges are putting uh, the money where the, where, the, where the mouth is. Yes, uh, I agree, especially regarding financial sector. I can uh, agree that 10 years ago, the banking industry was the one who, uh, who very often uh, stressed during our conversation about sustainability index that uh, environmental part is something that, uh, that uh, they are not uh, related to. And uh, actually, they already save the paper uh, or, or think about their uh, um, uh, transport habits and, and stuff like this. So, so things really have changed and financial sector now is uh, really paying attention or is uh, forced, um, if to be honest, uh, to pay attention uh, to this. Uh, but um, uh, 10 years ago, The Guardian wrote that innovation is crucial for the new world of sustainability. And uh, Christine, I just read in social networks that, uh, that uh, in, um, innovations and sustainability is uh, your favorite topic uh, why so and uh, uh, do you think that innovations can contribute to sustainable development yeah definitely uh, thank you for uh, for checking out my social media I guess <laughs> <laughs> like, great to hear that you someone is listening in, so I, I could not <laughs> skip this <laughs> Um, yeah, I somehow have uh, managed to be working in the tech industry for the last uh, I don't know a while <laughs> and uh, now I've been refocusing my attention on helping those tech companies to become more sustainable because uh, those tech companies have to start thinking about the subject when they are starting to fundraise from Western European investors, maybe not in Latvia yet, but from bigger investors, they have to start answering questions about sustainability, about their uh, social practices, uh, what are their governance standards. And uh, the average startup really has no answer to that subject because they've been just focusing on growing, 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 growing. And that's great. That's how the business is built. But at one point, you have to start thinking about these subjects. So that is the cross point for me, for sustainability and innovation. But from the other side, from bigger com company perspective, of course, innovation has to be part of the journey to becoming more sustainable because if we continue doing things just the way we are doing already now, there is no really innovation necessary. We have figured it all out, but obviously something is not really working. So big corporations are starting to host brainstorms and workshops and internal hackathons and try to figure out how to actually uh, do things better, how to save resources, how to become more efficient and how to become better competitors in this new playing field. Yes, uh, Hackton really is one of the most uh, popular uh, words uh, recently. I think uh, almost uh, every org serious organization have uh, uh, organized at least one uh, hackathon. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm always uh, curious how um, how much companies really think about the innovations? Of course, uh, for startups, it's kind of a basis. Uh, 
but, uh, but uh, we did a few years ago, uh, we did a survey among Latvian uh, companies and, and business leaders, and actually those figures were quite, uh, um, quite um, uh, surprising, uh, how, how, how they see actually innovations. And um, I, I, I would like to ask you, uh, Gartis, how, how, how you would assess uh, innovation field in, uh, in Latvia? What's your feeling? Ooh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a question I don't have many nice answers to. Uh, first of all, the, the, I don't have any other word uh, to say, only that the tragedy of Latvia is a very low investment in research and development in general. There are really, really you can count those companies who do a really a re regular um, significant I investments in, 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 in research and development, meaning, meaning they are looking to have better products, better services, etc. So the situation is not great. It's getting better with the, the market and, and, and the, the Europe, Europe and, and, and the environment is pushing us in this direction, which is good, great even, but uh, we still have a we still have a long way to go. That is why hackathons like this one, discussions like this one, and all, all things we, we do like this, uh, and we promote us all of thinking uh, about uh, new solutions, you know, innovative products, etc., is, uh, is, is really of a great value, and, uh, and thanks for doing this, guys. Uh, but uh, do you have any answer why uh, companies uh, don't uh, think about investing in, in research? Uh, because these figures, um, these figures are really uh, low. And I don't think there is one answer to this. There are several, probably. But if I have to uh, do some some guesses, this is probably this is not a innovation. Research and development is never a short, short short term solution. You will not make money tomorrow if you start investing in that today. And uh, and this is all about. This is the same thing when we think about environment and, 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 and green, green direction of European Union in general. This ha you, we, have to, we have to switch from the, from the short term thinking to, to the long, to long term. The politics of the European Union have decided that 2050 is the year we are climate ne neutral, which is a long way to look at. Um, but but decision has been made. We are working. Everyone who is receiving any kind of EU funds is has to has to look in this direction, which is great. And uh, the same is uh, the same thing is with innovation and and investments in in this in in for the companies. You just you know every every self help book you you see you have read. It's always the same thing you read there. You have to exchange the short term benefits for the long term and uh, that's it and that's the same thing here and and it's not easy that's why there are so many s self help blog books but um, we have to do that and we are on the way to do that uh on the other hand, uh, innovation rating uh, conducted by European Commission says that we there are certain uh, indicators where we can uh, be uh, be proud of ourselves. Martin, maybe you uh, can uh, comment. How does it look from uh, the perspective of the European Commission? Uh, yes, indeed, it's an important topic, uh, even for transition and, and climate. Uh, you know, sufficient amount of innovation, the collaboration between the business. And the science, you know, the the, the market and the, and the ivory tower, uh, it's it's essential. There there are there are a few things which which Latvian um, businesses or, or the Latvian uh, situation is good at. I mean, for instance, we have a high number of students in universities. I mean, that's a good thing, right? In universities, they can connect, they can learn, you know, they can they can grow. So that's that's a good thing. We have we have a lot of uh, trademark registrations from Latvia. So that that that's a good thing. Um, we have we have a number of, of startups. That's uh, that's that's good. Uh, but when it really comes to the to the essence of, of how the the companies work with each other, or how the companies work with scientists, or or how much the companies are are willing to to invest in 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 an R and D in developing their their products, you know, there Latvia really falls falls short. So while there are some some bright spots, some advantages, I, I think there are still some 
significant disadvantages. And, and I think uh, in a long term, this will come uh, to, haunt, uh, to haunt Latvia because any, any good product, uh, any good service uh, to, be, to be developed, you know, at some point uh, does require, um, you know, an, an, an innovative solution that can be adjusted or a new solution that's, that's being developed. Or in fact, there's a solution which is waiting to be developed, you know, at a higher stage of marketability and brought, brought to the market. So, you know, I, I, I go around, you know, with this innovation scoreboard in mind, you know, with this, uh, with this sort of large data, and I look at various Latvian companies. And, and, I, and I see that when you have a, a, a good open-minded scientist and, and sort of a good investor and a good team, these things come together. But you know, somehow it needs to be replicated. It needs to become sort of a more widespread practice that companies work with, with universities, with institutes, with, with scientists, not only in Latvia, but also in other countries. I just this week visited a, a, a company which developed an interesting solution for low emissions where, where the scientist in fact is from, from Italy. I mean, he lives in Latvia for seven years, but he worked for uh, you know, a big auto company before and, and with his know-how and his innovative approach, he comes here, he finds, you know, other like-minded people in universities, uh, you know, and then he approaches risk uh, capitalists and angels and then gets, gets some investment and some uh, competent management. And, and, that's, and that's how it works. And that's how you, that's how you develop. But um, I think indeed there is a lot, of, uh, a lot of work to be done. Latvia is a relatively modest uh, innovator. Uh, as Gatte said, the, the, the financing that, that goes into research and, and development is comparatively less. And we see the success stories, I mean, be it in Europe or, or Japan or South Korea or we're not, you know, those countries which invest uh, more in research, development, in innovation, at some point, you know, these, these investments uh, bring a return. And so I can only encourage, and the commission has only encouraged uh, to make more of these investments, not to rely just on European uh, money, uh, but also have uh, national funds, uh, company funds assign work more with with companies in in other countries and in collaboration and and that's that's the way forward but uh, innovation is indispensable for sustainability that's for sure um thank you okay let's uh, then uh, change the focus on uh, uh, from challenges to solutions uh, uh, we have uh, done uh, many uh, surveys uh, on occupational safety, on env environmental topics, on uh, diversity, asking uh, entrepreneurs uh, what, uh, what uh, are the barriers, what uh, actually, uh, what are the obstacles to, to becoming more, uh, more responsible. And um, actually, uh, you can guess so which is the, the, the uh, most often uh, mentioned reason why they uh, they um, don't do something. Can you Three, can you guess? Four. Money. Yeah. <laughs> Three, four, no, no, <laughs> no. The money is not the most uh, most uh, popular uh, reason. Actually, uh, the the most popular answer is nothing actually uh, disturbs them or, or, or uh, uh, actually the, the, the main reason usually is uh, that they have not thought of this. Money is one of the, the less mentioned actually, even the, uh, the, the, the state policy uh, on different topics is not the, the reason why, why they fail to do something. Um, so, um, Knowing this, can you, uh, Christine, uh, you, you act as a sustainability advisor, uh, maybe um, share um, some, some, some ideas. What could be done to, uh, to promote uh, innovations uh, uh, and, and um, raise awareness of, hmm. of companies? I think uh, events and conversations like this is uh, already a good first step to creating awareness and understanding of the subject at all. I think uh, the average company founder or like middle manager is just not thinking about these things on daily basis. But if it is becoming part of your daily agenda, if you see that everyone is doing it, then you at some point you'll realize you also have to do it. Um, yeah. 
But uh, state policy, of course, plays an uh, in important uh, role. I, I, I recently heard, have heard from, uh, from many local companies that they actually uh, would like to, to see uh, what is the focus of, uh, of uh, governmental uh, policy, especially regarding Green Deal. And, and, and so can you get, share some, uh, some directions which uh, companies uh, should already think of? Uh, the things which they will face. I, I wouldn't want to give any directions because there are too many. The, the, just the, the spread of the companies is so wild, is so wi wide. But uh, but some word, some things that I want to say is is um, you just have to think for your business. You know your business the best, and I. Uh, also agreeing with what Martin said in the very beginning, there are really no, no business, business, businesses that uh, will not change in the nearest or, or middle future. And you are a part of them. And you as entrepreneurs, as innovators, or anyone, you are part of this game. And the question you should ask, uh, yourself is what what my business what the world will be in this if it's easier then think about 2050 when the when the european union union will be climate neutral and uh, just 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 imagine and and that's the that's you are the best person to imagine that this is not uh, the government will not ever tell you what your business will look like and you yourself even don't know 100% but you have the best guess on what the what the world, what your business niche will look like in that in the that future, and just act on it today, act on it now, and that's 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 the innovation. This is where you can start uh, your innovation today by by the means, by the instruments that you have already today. But you have the people, you have the knowledge, you you have the best guess on 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 where we're all going. And uh, and if there is any kind of support um, from the, that you are looking at from European Union or even the, the the local national funds that we have here in Latvia, you will always be better if you are looking in this field in this direction to to be more a part of this green deal, a part of this more sustainable business in the future. That's it's easy to say, of course, and it's easy to explain, but. Uh, but uh, but uh, there's I don't think there's there's other way around it. Thank you, uh, Martin. Do you have any idea how the companies will uh, look in 2050? Uh, especially knowing that many of them uh, uh, today uh, look for reasons to uh, to to skip uh, this uh, topic uh, from their uh, from their uh, agenda and. Uh, uh, and uh, most probably some of them uh, hope that uh, they, they will not uh, um, uh, have a need to think of, uh, of becoming more environmentally uh, responsible. At least this is my, uh, my impression from similar, including similar discussions like, uh, like this. Uh, so what you could say? Yeah, please forgive me that I'm comparing the companies and, and, and buildings, but, but, but there is a certain simile. We have legislation in place that every new building that we build, either pu public or private or multi-apartment or a business construction, it has to be climate neutral. It has to be low emission or even zero emission building, right? So from now on, whatever we build, uh, you know, will be uh, highly sustainable in terms of buildings. So I'm a bit less concerned about the companies which will be founded, you know, today or, or tomorrow, because, you know, those founders, you know, those startups, those investors, you know, those teams will know that, you know, by 2050, uh, not only Europe, but I mean, that most of the world will, will be either be climate neutral or the world will be very different and, and a sad place to be. So, you know, if we apply this to, to the companies, but the problem is that we have a lot of stock of companies that need to make the green transition. So those companies which will not become green will not be there in, in 2050. That's for sure. I think there's a lot of, you know, a lot of solutions that uh, 
that companies could focus on. I mean, it's all about emissions, right? So we need to we need to reduce emissions. We need to look at you know what we use to move around, you know how our buildings are, you know what technologies we use, what the business model is. I mean, do we have sort of fossil fuels somewhere? Can we can we economize? You know, can we save energy? You know, that's the best energy uh, there. And and sort of energy storage solutions, more efficient batteries, better tires, you know, better construction materials. I mean, there's so much uh, out there that 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 I think ultimately uh, more effective solar panels, you know, better wind rotors, you know, ways to capture uh, carbon and, and store and have business cases for that. So I think there's that there's amazing uh, area of niches out there. But for sure, by 2050. Every company that, that we will know will have to be climate neutral, because if we are to be climate neutral as a society, we have to be at the individual level climate neutral, we have to be, and not only climate neutral, in a lot of ways, we will have to be climate positive. We will need to build buildings which in fact uh, capture carbon more than, more than it emits. We need to build ships, we need to build cars, you know, which are, which are, which are affected. So also at the corporate level, you know, by 2050, uh, mind you, you know, and, and keep this and you can record it, there will not be a company uh, in Europe or, or in most of the other world which will not be climate neutral. So if it does produce emissions, it will have to capture the emissions in some, some way, shape or form. So that's my prediction for the, for the next years, that we will all be converging towards climate neutrality. It will create a lot of opportunities. Yes, there will be costs. Yes, there will be difficulties, but I think the opportunities will outweigh the costs. Thank you, Martin. Listening to you, I'm uh, I'm becoming less uh, depressed uh, about the future and about future of my my uh, my children. So thank you for your uh, optimism. But if we if we continue with the solutions, and we have uh, we have few minutes before uh, the end of this uh, discussion, so I would like to to finish uh, on uh, the same positive note. Um, uh, so uh, what uh, you could. Uh, you could wish or recommend maybe one thing uh, which uh, would you would like to share with the the the, the companies uh, experienced companies and and those who just uh, have uh, started uh, the business um, uh, in order to be to become or to be uh, more uh, sustainable and successful uh, by by 20, uh, 2030 or by 2050, uh, uh, which is the, the, the one thing which you would like to share with them? Um, I would suggest to try to look at this time of change as an opportunity, because it truly is. If you are willing to understand the new rules of the game and the new normal, <laughs> then you'll just you'll be the winner um, and you'll be the market leader. I completely agree with Martin Scheer that companies will not be able to transition, they'll not be able to thrive and even survive. Um, so look into it uh, and focus on the things that you actually can change. Uh, this topic is very wide, it is very overwhelming at times and it can be confusing but it's better to do one thing and do it well than do nothing at all. So even if it's just starting to recycle in your small office building, it's already a great step. Thank you. I will just continue the words of encouragement. First of all, you have to understand <laughs> that it's not easy. It's hard. Change is, as for us as humans, is hard and it has always been. And there's, of course, uh, some kind of uh, the, the feeling uh, that you don't want to do it, you want to you want to postpone it and press snooze every time you hear your your. But but you have to understand that uh, this the same as with people. It's hard to to not to work out and be overweight and be sick. It's hard. It's also hard to do sports and eat well and uh, and sleep well. Both things are hard. You just to have to choose your heart. And this is the same thing is here. You can you can go on as you have done it before, not, not recycle, pollute, everything else, and live in a, in a desert all over the world, be, have the heats and, and droughts and all, all the things we have. It's hard. And also changing is hard, and changing your way of thinking is hard. You just have to choose your heart. It's hard. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, that, that's, that's how the life is. But, but it's hard for everyone, and, uh, and this opportunity window is open. 
And uh, I just wanted to correct one thing. It will not create some kind of uh, opportunity in the future. It's now. Those opportun the opportunity window is now. It's open. Who will be the first one, the fastest one that will win? And there's a high, high potential of you being one of them. Thank you. We well, got it that it's hard. Martin, <laughs> what you would like to uh, wish to, to experience or uh, young entrepreneurs? Well, the young entrepreneurs, I don't think I, ha I have to convince. I think we see the evidence from Generation uh, Z and, 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 and millennials already that there's a lot of demand for sustainable. There's a lot of uh, demand for organic, for locally grown, short supply chains, you know, for recycled, for, for, you know, not fast fashion, but sort of, you know, so, so the demand is there. So that's, that's wonderful. And if it is hard, you know, the Swedish doctor Axel Munda said that's just one reason more why to do it. <laughs> Um, and there's lots of help out there. You know, you're not alone. You know, for the next uh, 10 years, there will be more than 12 billion of, of EU money uh, coming, coming your way. And, you know, lots of billions also for the green transition. So use the money wisely. Uh, use your green mindset. Use the outlook. You know, uh, green is, is now the, the new black. Uh, it's, it's, it's out there. There's lots of information about it. You know, don't stay out of the main networks. Don't stay closed. You know, use all the opportunities. And yes, it's hard, but yes you will succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Christine Gattis Martinc, for, uh, I would say, inspiring uh, discussion and uh, different views on sustainable uh, sustainability and sustainable, uh, sustainable business. Uh, 30 years ago, there was a joke about uh, smoking. Every new year, I promise myself to stop smoking, and I have decided uh, to promise uh, this again this new year. So I, uh, I wish you uh, start with uh, those small steps and uh, with uh, at least uh, some, uh, some, uh, some, some um, uh, activities or at least one uh, thing to become uh, more successful in, in, uh, in 10 or 20 or uh, uh, even uh, 30 years and uh, start not with the promise, just promising, but with, uh, with doing. Uh, so thank you and, uh, and uh, please follow other valuable discussions which will, will uh, uh, follow. Okay, thank you and uh, see you in other events. Thank you. Thank you.